My name is Hussein Chalayan, and I'm a designer and live in London. I um, have lived in London uh, for most of my life, and uh, I was partly educated here and in Cyprus. Well, I came to London first simply because my father lived here, um, and um, all Turkish Cypriots have a connection with London because we were a colony. Um, my father came for education and he stayed. Um, and I think that almost all Turkish Cypriots I know have come to London at some point in their lives because they have relatives here, they come for holidays, they, they, you know, they get educated here, go back to Cyprus. Um, so there has always been this back and forth between Cyprus um, and London, also for Greek Cypriots too. When I was 18, I started um, attending the fashion course at St. Martin's. I got in, um, and at the, in those years, it was, you know, it was a big deal to go into St. Martin's. And um, I was there for four years, uh, where, where you had to do a year, years of, you know, one year of experience in the industry. And then I graduated in 93, um, you know, not knowing really what I was going to do. Uh, and I was doing this window at Browns, which was a, a sort of, at the time, quite a um, kind of coveted spot, let's say, because it was given, it was given to John Galliano 10 years before that. So the, pre the press picked up on it. And suddenly I started to get commissions and, um, and coverage when I wasn't really planning to do, you know, anything, really. And then I remember speaking to the main buyer at Browns, um, Joel Bernstein, saying to me, if you don't do something now with this interest, you know, you just, you know, nothing will happen. So I thought, okay, I'll, I'll take this opportunity to, you know, maybe turn this into a, a business. And um, there, was a friend, uh, there was a friend whose brother was interested in investing in, in, you know, in this new venture. And we became partners. And um, so for sort of several years after that, uh, you know, step by step, uh, we grew our business. You know, we started to show in London Fashion Week, you know, sell to Japan, you know, and the number of stores that bought our stuff would, would you know, increase every season. Um, and since then, it's just been an, a journey, to be honest. Honestly, I think that um, at the time in London, in this sort of, uh, in 93, 94, um, it, you know, it was just after the recession, so there wasn't a lot going on. There weren't many designers. Um, and I think that uh, there was room for new designers. And, you know, it was, in a way, you know, people like Alexander McQueen, myself, Owen Gaster at the time, Copperwheat Blundell, Sonnentag Mulligan, all these names. Uh, some of them which are still carrying on and some of them are not. Um, and I think that uh, there was definitely hunger for new designers to come up. And I think, uh, in a way, um, now I think there's too many designers. Um, and I think that you know, sometimes I don't think we need so many designers because there's already a lot there. Um, and at the time, I think that uh, you know, it was, in a way, easier to shine. And we were doing interesting work as well. Going back to sort of the 90s, it was kind of an exciting time because um, I think that uh, definitely, you know, you know, there was a sort of the beginning of the Brit art thing as well. And I feel like um, there were parallel kind of universes going on uh, while we were doing what we were doing. And, you know, I remember at the time, uh, very strongly being supported by Björk, and you know she wearing my her, she was wearing my stuff at concerts, and you know was really uh, there sort of in, in, as a sort of force, and um, and there was a sort of in, a stronger in, in my opinion interconnection with you know music, with with video, with um, in, in a way sort of you know. The, I guess there was this atmosphere where people helped each other out a bit more. Even though it was behind the scenes, it, it had an effect. Um, I think, although then on a mass level, through magazines like Wallpaper, you know, different facets of you know, life and culture got closer and closer, you know, aesthetically. Like, you know, interiors were being just, you know, shown in the same 
of magazine, you know, same magazine which is showing fashion and showing also industrial design, etc. So there, there has, you know, this culture then in the late 90s emerged and it sort of, you know, um, in a way became more mass. But I think that in the earlier years, when we first started, um, I feel more than ever at that time, uh, you know, I felt more connected in a way um, with other areas. Um, so I think although now visually or aesthetically or even superficially there is this connection between the different you know, worlds, I think at the time it was genuinely about everyone starting you know, together. So there was this kind of, um, in a way, a sort of a, um, a, you know, more of a connection that had an effect. I think London has always been uh, a place where the best music has come out, you know, a lot of good art has come out, you know, good of, a lot of good films have come out, so many good things have come out of England. Uh, I think um, the fact that obviously, uh, you know, London in itself is a, you know, multinational place, I think that adds to the, to, to the sort of mix, let's say, and to the openness of it all. And there is definitely, with that, a kind of Anglo-Saxon acceptance of anything that, in a way, sets London apart from other cities in Europe. It's like, I really think of London as a New York of... So London is, is a sort of uh, New York of Europe. And I think that um, in also, because of the history of colonialism in England, you know, England had to bear the, you know, uh, the influx of immigration. Uh, for a longer period of time than maybe most of the countries. So I think um, there is this sense of um, anything being possible here. I think um, the fact that you can have someone like Nasser Hussein be the head of a cricket team, it, wouldn't, it means only happening now in other parts of the world. So you know, I think that there is this situation here where, um, you know, Anyone could come from anywhere and they can still achieve things. A part of my work is inspired by London. I think in, its, in, in, in the sense that um, I think uh, London for me is, um, is partly like uh, the, the, the background I come from. I'm from an island where you know, we are you know, from a very mixed history, which we don't know because, you know, we identify with Turkey, although we have our, you know, we're, we have our own government uh, in, in North, northern Cyprus. We identify with Turkey just like how, in, in some ways, if you look at the past, how Sicily would identify with Italy, although now Sicily is part of Italy. Um, and you know, we come from a mixed background where we don't really know anymore you know, who our ancestors are, because you know, let's say the idea of the nation state, what, you know, in a way, is always there to kind of wipe off the differences. So I feel like coming here, because you know, history of immigration is more recent, is you can still enjoy or you can still, in a way, detect the differences. Uh, you know, you have Chinatown, you have the Jewish area, you have you know, the Korean area, uh, the Turkish area, etc. You can enjoy those, you know, those different textures where, where we've come from, because it's over a longer period of time, it's melted. You can't you can't separate it anymore. So I think there's this almost... I think I enjoy, the, uh, I enjoy the variety of people here, I think partly because it's innate in me. So I have a strong interest in, you know, movements of people across time, across land, like, you know, why people have gone from one spot to another, was it for economic reasons, for geographical reasons, whatever it may be, what, was it the wars? And I think... Because of this, in a way, London life keeps that innate kind of curiosity alive for me because I can really see and enjoy all the differences.